Over the weekend, two 12-year-old girls in Waukesha, Wisconsin, were arrested on charges of attempted first-degree murder. Now, the girls are accused of luring a classmate into the woods, then stabbing her 19 times. Court documents reveal the girls were motivated by an internet creation known as Slender Man. Now, pictures of the fictional character include variations of a thin man in a suit with a blanked out face and tentacles. What's most concerning is his message. The About Me section on his Facebook page says, some say I'm evil, but all I ever wanted was a friend. I think that a few dozen casualties are to be expected during the quest for friendship. That page has more than a million likes. Now, the character was created in 2009 from a former member on the website Something Awful and has since evolved into thousands of stories, comic strips, videos, and different memes by different people, many in the nature of terrorizing or killing. Now posted on the Something Awful website is a strong warning not to kill anybody, particularly because of this internet character. But is the damage already done? And should parents be concerned? These questions and many more are being discussed this morning by our panel. Social media expert Ashley Small, John Passini of Dad 2.0 Summit, and Dana Steele, CEO of YourDailySuccessTip.com. Big question, how can, the, how can we monitor the internet when you have something like this out there? Certainly, I think it's important that parents stay in the conversation. So checking your children's browser, limiting their internet time. A friend of mine actually has a family room for the internet, so they always are aware of how long their child is on the internet and what they're doing online. So it's important to always be monitoring and even you know checking the phone browser, sharing an iTunes account so you know what's being downloaded, what's being uploaded on your children's device. Now we're talking about memes. These are fictional characters, things that are made up. Right. But children seem to be taking them seriously. Well. They, you know, I think maybe they are, but the reality is that this character is a fictitious, you know, frightening boogeyman, no different than Freddy Krueger or any of the other things that have been created over history in, in many cultures. And so I think what we have here is we have people who have used this character to, you know, as, as, a, as a reason for doing violence to somebody else. And, um, but it seems that the character itself has about as much to do with it as the Beatles' White Album did with the Manson murders. And so I think for us as parents, we really just need to be mindful of this. And as a culture, we need to work on identifying mental and emotional illness early in people and being able to intervene and get them help. But in Waukesha, were, were, these, two, though, yeah. but, but were these two girls in Waukesha mentally ill? You know, any failure of this size, of this momentous uh, proportions, whether it's business or family or relationships, can always be traced back to communications. Yep. Nobody was communicating with these kids. Nobody wa there was no guidance. Parents who sit down with their kids and have dinner every night and have conversations and talk about the violence and talk about right. things that are going on and say this is right and say this is wrong, that's where that's where these things are solved is in communication i haven't seen any stories about the parents right. i don't know what the parents are like i don't know but Which i would i bet money on the fact that they did not communicate with their kids these that, are children th yeah. these are not 17 18 year old people these are 20 12 these are 12 year old yeah. children and and that's when we look at this the responsibility we have to look to the parents and to the families in the community do you yeah. think the damage has already been done and there's nothing that a parent can do to to backtrack on this well, I definitely think one thing to do moving forward is to, again, pay attention to what your child is looking for. I think the challenge here is that um, in previous years, we'd point at TV and magazines and newspapers. Now I'm pointing at social media. He had 89,000 followers. And so I think it's important to pay attention to who is my child following and how influential are they on social media because that's another entire conversation and an entire thing to put into factor when you think about what's impacting your child's decisions. That's one of the first reasons I got on Facebook years mm -hmm. ago. I would like to say it was because I was so cool and hip and trendy, <laughs> but it was because my teenage son got on it right. and I wanted to see why he was spending time on this. And so I follow him on Facebook and Instagram and taught myself Snapchat yes. like I have time That's to awesome. learn one more social media. <laughs> But I know what he's doing. I know what he's saying. I know who he's talking to. And again, I go back to we sit down at the dinner table every night and have their entire lives. 
and talk about the news and talk about their lives and talk about what's good and what's bad and what's going on around us. So really the bottom line is communication. Absolutely. That's, that's what you really Observation, to communication. And being tech savvy, I encourage parents to get tech savvy. So bravo to you because it's important. You can't just stand back and be like, oh, I don't want to touch that. You have to really jump in and try out the social media. Yeah, I don't understand exactly. that Twitter thing. Learn yeah. it. Yeah. Learn we, it. We are in a new world. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you so very no much. Problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, interesting Jeff. conversation. That could go on for <laughs> <laughs> yes, it could. <laughs> Melissa, back to you in the studio. What an important conversation. Please, everyone, if you heard that, spread the word. Tell people that that website is out there.